Hi everyone, this is Dylan with The Art of Chainmail, and today I thought I'd tell you the story of Chainmail. Now, what is Chainmail? Well, one thing is it's a doubly redundant word. The word chain, which means a series of links, is also the same as the word mail, which is the French word related to knitting, and it goes back to the very oldest forms of knitting and crochet. Imagine that you have a piece of yarn or some string or some claw or some thread, and you do the most simple chaining of links. I have a little loop in the end, and one loop goes to the next loop, 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 and you get kind of messy, but there's the very, very most simple form of chaining. And that relates to the base of crocheting. It relates to the base of knitting. In fact, if you think of the backside of a knitting pattern, it looks very similar to a European chain mail pattern. In fact, stage chain mail was usually made out of a thick material like rope, which had been knitted to look like uh, the chain mail pattern and then spray painted silver. Today, the stage armor is more often aluminum and neoprene that, again, has been spray painted to look like armor. It's very light and it's very quiet on the set, which is nice. Anyways, let's take a look at the most basic kind of chain, which is called a cable chain. And a cable chain is basically a series of links. Now, these links can be any shape. I'm using shower curtains here to demonstrate, but they could be elongated, they could be twisted and flattened like the chain in a uh, dog leash or something like that. So there's lots of different ways to make a cable chain, but in its most basic form, it's a link into a link into a link into a link. And when it's sitting like this, you have horizontal links and you have vertical links. And I have them different colors here so they're easy to see. That's your basic cable chain, and that's sort of the base of everything that is chaining. In fact, the old axiom about a chain only being as strong as its weakest link comes from a type of cable chain, because if one link fails, the chain breaks. Okay, so what are some things that you can do with this? Well, one thing is you can make the Japanese family of patterns. They're based on very, very regular geometrics. So I'll give you an example here. Just gotta make sure I'm counting out the right number of rings. I've made a longer chain. And now, let's see, we need one more set. Okay, so you take a chain, you fold it back on itself, and then you connect You connect the horizontals with the verticals to make a grid, and you get the pattern which is known as Hatoyi Gasari in Japanese. Well, <laughs> sorry, there I bumped the camera. Didn't mean to give you guys a shake. Okay, so that makes your very simple grid. That's your Hatoyi Gasari, and then another Japanese pattern takes that and twists it a little bit and makes it into a hex pattern. So, hexagon pattern. I take one, two, I'm gonna have to use this one silver link here because I don't have enough of these guys to fully illustrate. But, there you go. You get what's known as a Hana Gasari. In Japanese, Hana means flower. So this would translate as ha uh, flower chain, flower mail. Okay, what's well, something else that you can do with a cable chain? First of all, I'm gonna take this apart. Now if I'm smart, probably what you'll notice is that I'm gonna speed up this section of video, unless I think I'm being like specifically clever here and saying something that you'd wanna hear. It's probably going blah, 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 blah zipping by really quickly so we can get back to just our base chain to work with. Now, in chain mail, because what we're doing is we're putting together a weave, 
and it relates back to the old word for knit. We usually say that we're knitting a chain weave, not weaving a chain knit. And patterns usually refer to, well, you might be uh, inclined to call something like this a chain pattern, but it's more accurately, uh, more accurate to say that a chain pattern refers how to make something specific. Like here's a pattern for a specific piece of jewelry or a chain shirt or something like that. Here's a pattern for a coif. And that coif is in a weave like Japanese or European, and you're going to knit it together as a chain mailer. Okay, so you go back to your regular cable chain, four horizontal links, three vertical links. Here's something really interesting that happens with this chain, is when you twist it, the links start to align in a very interesting manner. And if you're at all familiar, that is the base of a European pattern. Basically you have two rows and what you have to do is lock down the third row so you can actually see the pattern. I'm doing it kind of awkwardly here, but the European four into one pattern, as far as we know, was invented by the ancient Celts almost 3000 years ago. And then when they ran into the Romans, the Romans said, ah, that's a really neat armor. It was very expensive to construct, but still useful for their backline troops like archers. They called it Lorica Hamata as compared to what their centurions and their frontline legionnaires were wearing, which was called Lorica Segmentata which is the famous Roman segmented armor. This was the four in one pattern. It was used by the Romans up to the fall of the Roman Empire, adopted all through the Dark Ages up into the Middle Ages, transitional armor, still used today for butcher's gloves, shark suits, all kinds of any industrial practices, anything where you want to protect specifically against a slicing type of blow. Chainmail takes an impact, like a poking type impact. It's kind of okay. Something like, oh, I bumped my camera again there, sorry. Something like an arrow would pierce very easily into chainmail if it was designed to do so. Very Like a spear with a lot of force would poke through chainmail, but something which is blunt, the, the trauma is sort of uh, spread over the impact area, so it's kind of good against that. But when it comes to slicing is when chainmail really shines. Uh, if you think of the European 4-in-1 pattern in terms of a spreadsheet, you have the overlapping rows. There's two kinds. There's ones that overlap that way. The linking ones overlap that way. And you have columns. It's best to put the columns up and down the body and leave the rows for around the body because then the chain pattern collapses into uh, the shape of what you're wearing. If you got something that uh, you, you want to be more curvy, then you get a better effect out of the hang of the chainmail. Although you can also do things like you can link up three links to reduce the pattern. You can add in an additional ring to expand the pattern and that allows you to create darts and seams and all kinds of really, really interesting things can be done technically with this pattern of chainmail. I'm going to show you one here that's got a bit of a jewelry application, which is when you fold this pattern back over on itself, the European 4-in-1 pattern, you can create another pattern. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm linking the first row to the third row with a fourth row. And remember, because it's a 4-in-1 pattern, every one link is going through four others. Put on one more here. And there you have what's known as a box link pattern. Box link patterns are very popular for jewelry. You might see it in the SCA or the LARPing live action role playing as a squire's chain. There's a lot you can do decoratively with it. You can put a bit of a twist in it when you put together a long linear length and it'll have a twist in it. You can use two different sizes or three different sizes of rings to create a more flattened or a regular cross section to it. 
something else that's really interesting about box link is if you add a cable onto the end of it, and here I'm going to use what's called a doubled cable, so it means it's two links side by side. Sometimes this is called kinging a chain pattern. If you think of when you king a piece in checkers, you get it to the other side of the board and you, you're you allowed to put another uh, piece on it and it doubles it up. The other idea is that doubled chains would be stronger, so su suitable for a king. So there, for example, you have some double cable added onto the end of the box link. Well, here's the other thing you can do is you can fold these links back and you create the base of what's known as the Byzantine chain pattern. Now, as far as I've been told, I don't know if this is truth. I don't have, uh, this is cleared to rumor. I don't have uh, documentation for this, but I've been told that the Byzantine pattern goes back to the ancient Egyptians. Uh, the basic linkage is just a uh, section of cable. It can be single cable, double cable, triple cable. Uh, you can even have longer sections of cable connecting basically match sections of box link. It's supposed to go back to the ancient Egyptians, maybe up to 5,000 years old. This is my most hated pattern because it's my most popular pattern. Byzantine pattern chains have outsold other chain patterns of all sorts at my booth over the past 15 years, 10 to 1. And so I'm actually rather sick of making Byzantine chain. It's everybody's favorite. Sometime, sometimes it's called bird's nest. And sometimes it's also called fool's trap. And I think you can see why it's just like so wildly popular. It's also the most slutty chain pattern. You can put, uh, like I said, longer sections of cable. You can do what's called a half Byzantine by only having the sections, fa uh, the box link sections face one way. You can have longer chains in between. You can have spiral chains in between. You can do all sorts of things. Basically, Byzantine is compatible with every other pattern. So it's like the most slutty chain pattern, the oldest chain pattern. Maybe one of the most interesting chain patterns. I'm not sure. But... I want to show you something else here with my rings, so I'm going to take these apart again. Maybe I'll do the same sort of thing. Maybe I'll speed up the video, or maybe I'll like what I'm saying and want to keep it. It's, uh, it's hard to say. Oh, yes, I remember what I was saying earlier about knitting chain. When you make chain backwards, it's the opposite of knitting, and this is very similar for knitters as well. We call it tinking. You think of the word knit and you spell it backwards. It's uh, T-I-N-K, tink. So when you're taking a chain apart, and trust me, you'll be taking lots of chains apart if you're making chains because mistakes are very easy to slip into patterns. Um, or patterns are, I should be saying weaves because I've called them that now. It's very easy for mistakes to slip into weaves. Okay, so I had mentioned earlier about uh, spiral patterns. These are also very, very popular for the SCA and LARPing. Spirals are kind of like a cable, very, very easy to make. You've got two rings, one goes through the other. You lay them over top of each other so that the one that's on top is twisting away from you or towards you. It doesn't matter, it'll give your chain uh, a right hand or a clockwise twist or a counterclockwise twist. You just gotta remember to keep doing it for the pattern. I like to do it away from me because it's easier to hold. Then the next ring that you put on, you just gotta remember that it goes into the two previous rings and lays the same way. So two previous rings twist away from me. Two previous rings twist away. Two previous rings twist away. Two previous rings twist away. And you can start to see the basics of a spiral chain appearing. Again, very popular for squires, chains, SCA, LARPing, that sort of thing. Uh, you have to put a con make these into a continuous chain for the twist to hold. And you don't want them to be over twisted or too tight or too loose or too floppy. You can also do them, you can do the same sort of pattern, but instead of the previous two, you can use the previous three rings and you get a real three ring circus out of that. With, by that, I just mean a bit of a tighter chain pattern. And you can also see it's compatible with the uh, two in one pattern. You just start adding on to. Uh, 
heading on to the pattern and you get a uh, a tighter version of the twist same principle applies you have to uh, make it a continuous chain now If you take a look at the Art of Chainmail Digital Bundle, it includes a tutorial for double spiral, where you double, or what I was saying earlier about kinging the links so they're doubled. That kind of spiral does much better at holding its twist when it's a linear chain and not a continuous chain. Okay, so we're back to the beginning here. One more thing to do with a cable chain. Quickly put one together here okay so we've covered the main patterns or the main uh, weave families of chain you got your Japanese, you got your European, you got your spiral. One more family to talk about off the top of my head, and that's the Persian family. Now, what does the Persian family have to do with a, box or a simple cable chain? Well, let me show you. Again, we got the cable made. This time, we're just going to slide the rings back. You can see the little hole down there. I'm going to take this ring and I'm going to jump it over one to the hole there. I'm going to take this ring here, jump it into the hole there. Take this ring back here and jump it into the hole there. And you have what's known as the half Persian three in one pattern. You can see it's got it was a little hard to see. It's got a trapezoid cross-section like the odd-numbered Persian family chains do. It's wider on the bottom than it is on the top. Why is it called half Persian? It's called half Persian because if you were to look down the cross-section of the piece, you're seeing, and that's really hard to see, you're basically seeing uh, one half of a full Persian chain. Now, I want to show you one trick here. I'm going to show you to make a full Persian chain. I'm going to show you one trick here. Also, how does this turn or relate to my other tutorial on orm length? This is four and one half Persian. Orm length, or this is three and one half Persian. Orm length is four and one half Persian. So if you were to take the links here and you had to pop that one over and you were to pop this one over, you also have another way to do an orm length chain. Now, if you wait to the end of my video here, I'll have a link to my other uh, top three methods for creating orm length chain. Now, I'm going to put this back, hopefully, to a three in one. Okay, so here's your three in one section. Now, how do we get ourselves a full Persian out of this? Well, basically, we just have to copy the other side of the pattern. So, what I'm going to do is a little haphazardly here. I'm just going to start filling in the other rings, which would cause this to, or which would help this comprise a full Persian chain. Now, the thing to recall about a, uh, but the half Persian chain is that there's other variations as well. There is a half Persian sheet. Actually, there's a couple variations of half Persian sheets. Plus, you can also do the reverse of the half Persian families. Yeah, I know, it's confusing, right? But it is another very, very versatile pattern. And also, I'm, I'm hoping to show you, like, I hope you're noticing here, if you got an eye for, uh, for pattern recognition in the weave, that essentially there's a huge similarity in the layout of a box link and full Persian. So I'm trying to bring you know the story back to its conclusion. We got to how to make the box link and it's, where does the Persian family fit into the rest as if starting from a cable or a simple cable wasn't enough. Well, the similarity to box link, it's, 
it's kind of hard to describe. It's not quite inverted. It's more just like a tighter version of box link. You're going to see here that it's a lot, a lot tighter. Lot, uh, it'd be a lot more difficult to make into a, a, a twist like you could the box link. A lot less room to, uh, to, uh, to operate. You can see here the pattern's getting tighter as I put the rings in. There we go. Just one more. Hope you've been watching what I was doing there. Because now you have your full Persian pattern. And I got it right there. Yeah. I really hope that you can see how that relates to the box link and how all the different families of chain patterns are related. Thanks for watching the Art of Chainmail. Hey everybody, this is Dylan with the Art of Chainmail. I just wanted to thank you for watching my video, The Story of Chainmail. This is only the second tutorial type of video I've done here on YouTube, so please let me know how I'm doing. I really appreciate subscribers. It really helps me out. If you want to learn more about Chainmail, please visit my website, artofchainmail.com. We got the best beginner's guide. I got 11 Art of Chainmail tutorials. I have a Dylan's Art of Chainmail mailing list. Let me know anything that I can do for you and I'll help you out. I think that I should probably add uh, some links here at the end of the video. I said in this that I was going to have one for the Orm Link tutorial video, so I'll put that up there. And maybe over here I'll have one for the official unboxing of my Hero Chain print all over t-shirt. It's the fastest, lightest, strongest, and least expensive chainmail t-shirt on the internet. And also the culmination of 28 plus years of uh, doing art and teaching and creating chain mail and so i really appreciate it if you check it out thanks so much for watching and uh, chain on by the power of chain skill i have the tutorial